So I just finished watching the new Superman with my son, which by the way both of us absolutely loved, when I remembered that not so long ago, actually something like two decades ago, there was a really bizarre discovery that was reported in the media as real life kryptonite found right here in the mine on Earth. And although I completely forgot about this discovery, not so long ago, just a few weeks ago, there was a new article, the article published in the Nature magazine, that surprisingly discusses this mineral once again, in this case talking about its bizarre properties and its bizarre structure. But it's not called kryptonite, its official name is jaderite. And so in this video I wanted to briefly discuss exactly why this is so important and why it's sometimes referred to as Earth's kryptonite and talk about why this is a pretty exciting discovery. But first of all, just to clarify, kryptonite from the Superman comic books is obviously not real. But here we are talking about a real mineral that surprisingly has a profound implications for humanity's energy future. But what exactly is jaderite and how was this discovered? And here the story begins in December of 2004 in the country of Serbia. And in the western part of Serbia there is a valley known as Jadar Valley. It's somewhere in the region right here. And while this valley became really famous overnight, because the geologists from Rio Tinto Exploration made a somewhat remarkable and previously unseen discovery. During the exploration using drill cores, they encountered very small rounded nodules of a never before seen mineral. A mineral that did not match anything and a mineral that they could not identify, which they instantly flagged as potentially important. And here the samples were right away sent to London and Canada. One sample went to a museum, the second sample went to a lab in order to determine what's inside. And so following detailed examination and testing, this instantly became classified as a completely new mineral in 2006. And they decided to name it Jaderite after that valley where it was discovered. But it was really decomposition that was so bizarre, you can see it right here. Lithium, boron, sodium, silicate hydroxide mineral. I sometimes refer to this as Lina Sibo. And that might sound familiar to you if you're a comic book geek, or if you watched most of the Superman movies in the last few decades. This is of course our kryptonite connection. This exact chemical name was written down on a case containing fictional kryptonite in Superman Returns. This is the part where Lex Luthor steals it from a museum. And so this bizarre similarity attracted a lot of media attention shortly after the discovery. As a matter of fact, it's actually kind of bizarre that the mineral was discovered around the same time when the movie was filmed. But naturally, there are some obvious differences. First is that this is not a green mineral. Unlike fictional kryptonite that glows in green and obviously contains a lot of supernatural effects, real jaderite does not contain fluorine and does not emit anything green. And though it does appear kind of boring, containing mostly white and earthly silicate mineral colors, it does start to glow if you shine it with the UV light. Specifically, it turns pink or orange. But despite of this, it is still super exciting and, to some extent, extraordinary in its own right. Despite not having any supernatural powers, it does contain some superpowers that we've never seen before in any mineral. And so let's discuss why jaderite seems to be so important and why this is potentially super exciting for a lot of future technologies. And that's mostly because it contains lithium, a key component in batteries for electric vehicles and a lot of other stuff. And these batteries are of course at the heart of the ongoing global green energy transition, powering everything from electric vehicles to grid-scale energy storage systems. And it also contains boron. And boron too has a lot of applications. It's usually used in alloys, ceramics, glasses and a lot of industrial processes. And so here this jader deposit is now considered to be one of the largest lithium deposits on the planet. The reserves here seem to contain 118 million tons of ore grading 1.8% lithium oxide that's unprecedented compared to any other deposit. And so here, according to the United States Geological Survey, this would provide the world with at least 2% of all lithium required for future technologies. But more importantly, it's really the quality of this mineral that seems to matter the most. We'll discuss this in a few seconds. And so assuming this mining project goes ahead, this could potentially supply Europe with at least 90% of all of its battery needs, dramatically reducing European Union's dependency on, for example, China 
and of course creating a lot of jobs and a lot of industrial independence. And last year, in July of 2024, there was an official signing of a memorandum between the Serbian Minister of Mining and Energy and the Vice President of European Green Deal, with the mine potentially starting to operate as soon as 2028. But this also led to a lot of concerns in regards to potential environmental impact. Mostly because a lot of Serbians seem to not want this mine and are worried this is just going to pollute the entire country. Especially because this is going to require huge amounts of water and a lot of assets required for the production process. And so here there's a very high chance this is going to contaminate a lot of fertile and arable land, creating a lot of issues for Serbian agriculture. But Rio Tinto, the company that's going to be mining this, did present a somewhat intriguing plan. They're going to be using a new experimental process designed to prevent pollution that's already been tested in Australia 2000 times. And they also added that a lot of the land that they're going to be extracting this from is technically not even fertile and is not used for agriculture anyway. And so basically right now this is mostly a kind of a legal political battle with all this real-life kryptonite just sitting underground. But assuming this does go through, this could potentially transform Serbia into an energy powerhouse and dramatically boost the GDP in the entire country. But beyond the commercial and political significance, Jaderite is also scientifically remarkable, mostly because of its rare formation conditions. And so one of the recent studies explored the idea of how this mineral seems to form. Scientists here worked out very precise steps required for Jaderite to form in nature, revealing why it seems to be so ridiculously rare. And here it needs lithium-rich volcanic glass, alkaline-rich terminal lake, and clay minerals turning into crystalline structures. But more importantly, everything has to be measured in exact amounts, and everything has to be available at all times, with even slight variations usually producing something different. And so these criteria have to be so precise that so far, this is the only place on the planet where this mineral has been discovered, making Serbia somewhat unique and extremely lucky. With the amount of jade right in this location, suggesting that this mine could operate for at least 50 years. But by knowing how this forms, geologists can now actually try to predict potential other locations on the planet where either more jade right or something similar can also exist in large amounts. And really because this bizarre mineral contains great potential as an important source of lithium and boron. With this new project now referred to as Project Jadar. Although I think Project Kryptonite would have been much cooler. But what exactly makes this mineral so exciting compared to so many other lithium minerals that are already being extracted by companies across the world? Well, first of all, Jaderite contains a significant amount of lithium in a form that's relatively accessible for extraction without much processing, which is of course crucial for battery manufacturing. Here, lithium ions inside Jaderite are the active species required for charge-discharge cycles and are extremely easy to extract. As a matter of fact, the structure of this mineral allows all of the lithium to be housed in a stable form inside the mineral matrix, which allows mining companies to extract it super easily. And so here it's really the structure of the mineral that makes it so unique and so important. And since this is classified as a lithium clay deposit, the mineral itself is much softer and requires much less energy to extract both boron and lithium. Which is actually incomparable to hard rock lithium minerals, for example spodumene, which is very often used for lithium extraction today. But here this is a very hard rock and does require a lot of processing for extraction. As a matter of fact, the extraction process in this case would be entirely unique. Very different from spodumene, lepidolite and lithium brines, where we usually get most of the lithium today. And here the process would be very simple. First prepare the ore. Here all of this starts by crushing the rocks and because this is a soft mineral, not a lot of energy is required. Second, the use of acids such as sulfuric acid dissolves lithium and boron, allowing selective recovery of lithium as lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. While also extracting sodium sulfate and the boric acid as the byproducts also used in industries. And that's very different from spodumene and lepidolite, which usually undergo very high temperature roasting over 900 degrees Celsius in order to convert lithium into an extractable form. And this is also then followed by leaching, which is a very expensive and very dirty process. And so here jaderite extraction only requires sulfuric acid at moderate temperatures. But it's also possible to extract everything using bioleaching, a new method we've discussed in some of the previous videos, which basically uses acidophilic bacteria, for example this bacteria, Acidithiobacillus feroxidans, 
that can dramatically accelerate a lithium dissolution and would work very well with this mineral, but once again doesn't work very well with spodumene and lipidolite. And so here the overall processing of byproducts and the removal of toxic residues is much much simpler compared to other extraction processes. And also produces a lot of additional materials such as boron and sodium. Making this probably the most efficient way to produce lithium on the planet. But the question of whether this mine becomes real or not will not be answered until possibly 2026. This political battle is still going on and we don't actually know exactly what's going to happen yet. Nevertheless, this is still a pretty exciting discovery in terms of science and mineralogy and does have a chance to potentially improve the environment on the planet by providing us with a cheap source of lithium batteries. And it also has this very bizarre connection to Superman and Kryptonite. But until future discoveries about Jaderite or until we discover some other really bizarre mineral that could save the planet in some way, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, maybe support the channel by joining the channel membership that grants you early access or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.